Welcome to the first ever episode of The Graybot Show. I'm one of your hosts, Sam Torres, joined by my lovely co-host, Tori Gray. And in this show, we're going to be covering some of your top questions related to AI and marketing. So what are we going to be doing here on The Graybot Show? First, we're going to be talking about key AI news and updates. We really want to help you understand what this means. So not just what are the headlines, but how does that apply to your business and your life and make it actionable? Yeah, there are so many things happening and going on, and the speed at which we're seeing this progress is just really, Exhausting. it's overwhelming sometimes. So we're going to try to help make sense of that. Now, the other thing we're going to try to do is try to be as unbiased as possible. We are not coming at this with an agenda. Obviously, our opinions may sometimes come out, but we do want to try to show both sides of each of these issues so that you can make decisions on your own. So with that, we're also not here to spread more fear or spread more misinformation about what AI is doing. We really just want to talk about the technology as it is, where are the possibilities and where are the limitations right now? Absolutely. And so more about us and why the heck you might consider listening to us. Uh, Sam and I run The Gray Dot Company. We have been collectively around for almost, what, 27-ish years between the two of us in SEO mm -hmm. um, and in digital marketing as a whole. We are at the intersection of tech, digital marketing, SEO. And so we deal with uh, these large language models like ChatGPT and like these image generators, like MidJourney every day in our day-to-day -day working life. That's right. So for this first episode, we wanted to tackle the big question of what are some of the legal implications or just implications in general around publishing generative AI content. So when we talk about that, we mean the content that AI has written for you, whether it's chat GPT or any other tool out there. Yep. An important thing to keep in mind here is we are not lawyers and we are not giving you legal advice. You need to talk to your own lawyer about these very important things as they matter for your business. This is just to help you think about it and know what hopefully the right conversations to have. Absolutely. We're definitely seeing precedent is being set. Obviously, this is new technology, so there aren't any legal guidelines right now to really follow. The other thing, you are going to hear us talk mostly about chat GPT. That's really just because it is the front runner for this technology right now. Please know there are dozens, if not hundreds, more platforms coming out all yep. the time. Uh, it's just, like I said, ChatGPT is the front runner, so that's where legal precedent is being set right now. So let's talk about what the heck it is to, to set the context here. So overall, BAR, ChatGPT, and other large language models, they are essentially very, very good autocomplete. Um, they don't necessarily, all they do is finish your sentence very well, uh, with your sentence being what you start in your prompt. Another great analogy I've heard is like a small child in your house that has may maybe perhaps overheard you say things and can repeat them back to you. Maybe things you didn't want them to repeat back to you. That doesn't mean they really know what it means, but they can repeat it back to you in a way that sounds very authentic in its delivery. So Tori, to clarify that, um, it sounds more like you're saying it's just really good. Like you said, it's a smart autocomplete, but you're saying it lacks the reasoning behind it, right? There is, there is no reasoning. It is, it is not having thought. It is smart autocomplete. Correct. Right. And to that point, I'd also like to say for those who are data scientists or know all about AI, know that when we're talking about LLMs and ChatGPT, it is not true AI. It is not sentient for those who have seen a lot of sci-fi movies like I have. Yeah, this is but, machine learning. Yes, exactly. So that does bring up the question of, is anything that an AI platform creates original? Uh, so there's a lot of open conversation about this, but what we are seeing right now, so for ChatGPT, it was trained on the internet is really as clear as we get as far as what documents were used for the training. But that does mean that, uh, and there's a class action lawsuit for it, Basically, it could have been your own private data or copyrighted information and content that was used to educate the model. So we're going to follow this one pretty closely and see how it pans out is to definitely understand, like, if another tool is using your copyrighted information, you should be getting credit for that. And that is not something that is happening with these AI tools. 
Yep. And before we move on here, uh, I also want to point out that the Washington Post put out an article where they're actually pulling the data sources for where ChatGPT and how much data that they used. Um, you know, it, it's kind of general and you can just see how much data they use relative to other people in the data set. So going back to the conversation of whether or not accuracy is relevant within the framework of it's just using autocomplete, uh, the short answer is no, there, there is no real sense of, there, there's no fact checking happening here. You need to be careful about what you trust from ChatGPT. Hallucinations are relatively common. So here's an example of that, where ChatGPT made up a fake article from 1956 about a real conference that happened. So the way they intertwine what is real and what is not real, it, it can be confusing and it can be misleading in a very confident way of, de of delivering that information to you. So it doesn't just get things wrong. It can completely fabricate that information. It can cite articles that didn't happen, um, including things that can really confuse people maybe that have written about this article. So there was another example of, I think it was from The Guardian, and a reporter behind the scenes was doing research, and they asked it about a specific person that they wanted to cover, and it made up articles. They followed up with that author. It sounded so accurate, that author wasn't for sure that they didn't actually make it. So pretty confusing. Yes, I, I love your point, Tori, about the hallucinations. They sound very confident. They sound reasonable. Do. Um, that they would be reliable sources. Uh, but you do need to be careful because we are seeing one of the first defamation cases being um, brought to light against OpenAI. So it's a gentleman in the state of Georgia, and he is suing OpenAI for a defamation because now he's been essentially credited for being in a lawsuit, having it brought against him that didn't actually happen and is affecting his reputation. That's also going to bring us into is any content generated by ChatGPT protected? We already talked about how ChatGPT and OpenAI and other platforms are using content that's available on the internet to help educate it and train it. So in that way, we do see that it's taking advantage of what is probably protected content. So in that way, is the content that you create with ChatGPT protected? And in short, the EU and the US Office of Copyright have stated, no. Uh, so keep that in mind that anything that you're putting together, for example, if it's uh, if you're using Midjourney to create logos, if you're using it to make slogans or company names, anything like that, you're not going to be able to copyright it. You're not going to be able to protect it. So if it's important enough that you want to be able to protect it, you need to have a human do it. This brings us to the next point. Is any of this data that you put in ChatGPT private? And let me spoil the punchline. No. So there is a specific case here where uh, I think a lot of people have heard the story where Samsung workers were, were debugging something in their code. So they put proprietary source code within ChatGPT. I think they were successful in getting that fixed because that's a great use case of what ChatGPT is good at. And unfortunately, that content that they have submitted now is owned by ChatGPT. And whether knowingly or not, she, 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 sorry, ChatGPT can be using that information um, within the results for future items. So there again, there's no concept of reality. There's no concept of really sourcing. They could just be delivering these code bits to other people unknowingly. Um, so really be careful about that because your confidential, your proprietary information is at risk. Do not use ChatGPT, BARD, or any not first party AI tool to do any of this work. Exactly. Yeah. And there are some tools out there. Definitely check out the platforms themselves. See how they're see how they're planning to use your interactions with the tool. This uh, so on the screen we've got right now, the five and six, those are pulled from Jet GPT documentation. Mm -hmm. So they are clear. They do make it clear. Um, yeah. and I would, you know, just say if a platform isn't answering that question or isn't being clear, probably assume that it's going to be used at least in a training capacity for themselves. Yeah which means that it could end up in an answer for someone else. So just something to consider. So with all of this, when we're talking about publishing generative AI and our AI content and how should you feel about it, the number one thing we wanna say is this, it is a really powerful tool. There are lots of ways that we think you can use it to help shorten process times or find the right kinds of answers or the right kind of content for your audience, but you need to use it wisely, use it effectively to make sure that you're not gonna land yourself in any kind of hot water. Yep, and the two major things to keep in mind with that, 
that information is that you need to do human fact checking. You need to edit it. You need to edit it and, and really review and make sure that that information is good for your use before you risk embarrassing yourself. You also need to make sure that your private data stays private by not submitting to that, um, submitting that to them within your prompts. Yep. And definitely what we're seeing when it comes to content, unique perspective is always going to be the best thing that you can add value to a conversation, yeah. uh, which is not something that AI is going to be able to do for you because it's just aggregating what it's already learned. It's not going to be able to put together any unique thoughts or reasoning um, behind that. So we hope we've answered your top questions. Thanks for joining us. And we hope to see you on the next episode of The Gray Bot Show. Thanks for joining.